It is 8.35 and it is time to call this meeting to order. Uh, we will stand for the prayer and the pledge. I suppose I'll say the prayer since unless someone else wants it. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Stand for the prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the opportunities this day and we thank you for this wonderful community that you have allowed us to live, to prosper, and to raise our children in. As we have gathered here for this workshop today, but ask that you be with us and give us and give us patience and give us strength and give us wisdom that we may do the things that are right for our community and for the citizens of San Angelo. Bless us and forgive us. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 The American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Now we've got the work session agenda. Uh, all matters that are listed under the work session agenda are presented for discussion and future planning purposes only. No administrative or regulatory action will be taken by the council. Public comment will not be accepted during the work session agenda. Number A is discussion and consideration of matters regarding the fiscal year 2015-2016 budget preparation, including but not limited to number one, general fund revenue estimates, number two, funding council priorities and goal, and number three, other items needing council direction. Ms. Morgan, are you ready, ma'am? Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry, I had, thought I had a piece of paper right here. I have the first item before you for certified values of the uh, property tax. We were working through those um, this weekend. The appraisal district was able to meet um, our deadline of receiving them by the 25th, and then they sent us the supplemental information on the 26th, and so we were able to work through yesterday of receiving that information. But just to give you a brief report of what's going on with our um, tax valuations, our property valuations in the city, we are an increase from last year, our certified valuations were $4.1 billion, and this year we're looking at total certified valuations of $4.5 billion. So that's about a 9.125% increase, and we do expect today to receive the information regarding you know, how much of that is due to new property added to the tax roll. We do expect that a lot of that is as a result of um, for example, new hotels coming online last year, we didn't have that volume on the property tax yet, and so we will have more detail on that, but we are able to move forward with general fund discussions of the, um, as it affects revenue with these final figures. I won't spend much time on the calendar. You know, we're uh, ahead of our state deadlines and working to uh, to meet those. And with that, I'll jump right into the council priorities and goals. We've talked last meeting about the progress we've made on each of those, uh, what still remains to be tackled on each of those. And so I'll, I'll just hit them really quickly since we spent a lot of time on those last meeting uh, related to water infrastructure. That first council priority goal, of course, uh, we talked last meeting that a lot of this will be um, vetted as we have continued discussion in the fall related to the water rate study and so uh, although there has been substantial progress as discussed last meeting uh, we would recommend that there's no requirements this operating budget cycle there would be no need to take action at this time simply because we're going to continue working on that priority and bring you something uh, very quickly hopefully this fall uh, with uh, implementation of, of, of meeting this priority at a larger level. The next item, of course, your second priority is related to streets. Um, the action, this budget cycle that we're recommending, we'll get to the details on that in just a moment, but there is a request um, from the director uh, related to increased funding for maintenance, uh, related to an inflationary um, aspect. And then, of course, the bigger part of it, though, that we have yet to address is related to reconstruction of failing and failed streets. And so, of course, that will have a lot to do with the results of the street survey, and we do expect that we will have <coughs> results on those 
soon and we'll be able to report back to you so um, no required um, requirements to meet this budget operating cycle but we will continue working on that and bring that to you Morgan excuse me what <coughs> is, what is later at a council meeting soon or the street survey I, I would have to defer to Shane Kelton on on the timeline of when how that street survey will be available just real quick how soon at next council meeting two meetings when we're expecting the final deliverables uh, in mid to late August and then hopefully we'll have something to you Septemberish kind of is what time frame we're shooting for right now okay thanks The next council priority, your third item, is related to salaries. We do recommend action this budget cycle, and we've talked um, that there has been an addressment uh, of somewhat to the police meet and confer um, for adjustment to market. We had that three-year plan to get to 95%. Uh, we do have options available for raises for civilians and fire civil service, and perhaps even some discussion of that police meet and confer, uh, but we wanted to... Uh, we have an amount identified and we can work through what those details are of what parameters we're going to allocate um, funding to but we will get to that in just a moment so we do recommend action on this item this budget cycle and we'll, we'll Lisa Marley's on, on deck to be able to speak to specifics about that as well uh, but moving on to your next council priority your fourth item is related to the improved development process you'll recall last meeting that we talked at length about um, the the substantial um, uh, investment in development services related to um, staffing and 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 hardware and software and, and things of that nature uh, we do recommend that there are some smaller items that should be considered uh, related to training and uh, professional development and boards and commissions and um, items of that nature and so we do recommend action this budget cycle uh, we will get to that in just a moment and the last item if that's of your priorities is related of course to the police station and we would recommend that there's really no requirements this operating budget cycle but we'll continue working on meeting this need you know outside of budget preparation we do identify that it'll be um, something that takes some more time and some more resources on that, that one on that one Morgan yes, sir. Um, we we already had the funding to do what we're doing at this time that we've <coughs> we've set the, the funding aside for, for the purchase, purchase of the property okay and that was from last year's right that was we did it in this fiscal year but this funding source was fund balance okay and so we that's taken care of what yes. we're gonna do at this point what we've decided to do is care of. exactly as we discuss the possibility of uh, uh, professional assistance right. determining the best use of the property um, we'll need to consider okay. how to pay for that but we'll work that okay. when the time comes thank you and, and with that that moves us into other items that um, the city manager would recommend that we we consider the first item there of course is is something we've discussed in, in past budget cycles and earlier this budget cycle <coughs> Is related to health insurance that we do ex anticipate that there will be increased expenses to meet the regulatory requirements um, due to Affordable Care Act in addition to that we do have an increased um, claims experience and so we anticipate that there will be a recommend there is a recommendation to increase the employer contribution for health insurance and we have several options available that Lisa Marley has developed what we've plugged into the budget at this time is kind of the most conservative opportunity um, and we wanted to um, we'll work through those details as well Morgan that your slide says propose increasing employer contribution but the 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 um, alternative that we've plugged in also includes an increase for employee contributions is that correct I believe all proposals uh, propose an increase to the employer and employee contribution thank you that there's no way to tackle it without both thank you that is what we've we've developed the next item there is related to pay-as-you-go capital you'll recall that last year we reduced this item by 1.5 million dollars to assist with funding the council priority related to streets and that helped us in large part reach the eight-year maintenance cycle that we're at now and so th uh, this was intended to be a short-term solution and this of course funds medium-sized capital needs items related to that we wouldn't be able to absorb in the operating budget um, but wouldn't necessarily issue debt for and so in the past this has proved a, a, a terrific resource for things such such as uh, development services software and hardware to meet the other council priority we discussed earlier uh, to fund 19th Street sidewalks uh, to fund um, Avenue P the largest part of Avenue P and the Fairmount 
cemetery columbarium. Now moving forward, as we recommend replenishing this fund, it would be able to, to fund items such as streets reconstruction. I mean, it could be used for debt service for, for streets, and that could be a big part of it. It also could be used for any city facilities, uh, recreation center, air conditioning, you know, items that are in the CIP that we have not yet identified funding for, even so far as improvements at the animal shelter, um, roofs and ACs uh, across the board, across all our, our facilities uh, need some uh, need to be addressed. And what we would propose is an opportunity to f replenish this funding by $500,000 each year for the next three years to ultimately get to that $1.5 million back in capital. And you'll recall that as we budget for this, we don't necessarily, ta necessarily take action in the summer during budget discussion, but early in the fiscal year, October, November, we generally bring this to the council and with recommendations of here's what's in the CIP, here's what's been ranked um, in the past by the CIP group and by the citizens, and that some opportunities for funding those items then the council would take that action later in the year and so by replenishing that by five hundred thousand dollars in fiscal year 16 would give that opportunity for addressing some pretty major um, capital items the next item there that's recommended by um, city manager for consideration is related to vehicle maintenance, that there's a need for improved management of the city's fleet. That would be at a cost to the general fund of just over $340,000, and we wanted to, to be able to address that and talk about that this budget cycle as well. And staff is available, of course, with those details. This last item here is related to uh, services lacking resources. Really, at this point, we've kind of addressed the major items earlier in this presentation. And so I have no additional details to report at this time uh, related to that, but we, because we think we're, we're really hitting all those, those major points with you in earlier presentations. It's almost a placeholder until we knew we were going to be with, uh, with Sunday's figures. So with that, you'll re we're able to, to break into the, um, the opportunity to, to try to balance the budget. You'll recall that we started with, uh, last meeting we spoke to you and we had $481,000 revenue over expenditures. And that was related to um, that sales tax to keep it flat, to keep it with fiscal year 15 activity, that we would be able to increase it by $1.2 million for the fiscal year 16 budget. That that's We have a lot of uncertainty related to sales tax, but we do think that we'll be able to achieve at least what we achieved this year in fiscal year 16. And so that was a $1.2 million marginal increase to the general fund. Uh, that largely funded the police meet and confer raises at almost $700,000. So that $1.2 million minus the $700,000 got us to this you know, <coughs> $500,000 figure here. In addition, as I spoke earlier and touched on related to the uh, property tax, we were able to apply our, our, our current tax rate at the $4.5 billion property tax valuation, which would yield marginal revenue to the general fund of $2,583,000. So that does give us some capacity to address the items that we have um, identified in the budget process. So that $481,000 plus the $2.6 million does give us this $3,065,000 to address council priorities and other items uh, recommended by, by city manager. And so we took the opportunity to begin uh, plugging figures in related to those. And what, we, what I would recommend is that we kind of go through these um, quickly and then, well, in as much time as, as you desire, and then we can identify, you know, which items do we want to definitely plug in. We have a, a, an outside column here, you know, what we've proposed with city manager's recommendation would leave us a little bit of room of $44,988 to continue addressing other items, and we can see which items, you know, we really want to uh, invest in, which items we want to kind of back off from. There's some opportunity with that. So with that, I'll begin working through each of these items. So as we discussed, we have the resource of $3,065,000. The first item there is related to um, the council's um, top priority in the general fund, and it's related to streets. And so there's a component here related to uh, street maintenance. You know, we got to that eight-year maintenance cycle. We do anticipate that there's um, an inflationary impact on, on that budget. And so the operating budget for that is, is just under $4 million. And so we, if we apply you know, a cost index to, to try to estimate inflation on that, we would anticipate that there would be a need of $115,000 added in the fiscal year 16 budget simply to maintain the eight-year maintenance cycle that we're on right now. So we do have, of course, Shane Kelton available to speak to more details on that, but that is um, one item that we could address uh, with, that, with that capacity. 
The next item there is related to council goal related to salaries, adjustment to market. Um, our goal was to get to 95%, I believe, in about three years. We're in year two of that. And so, um, again, we, we got these figures Sunday afternoon. Yesterday, we worked through some opportunities. And so at this point, what we've done is we've plugged in an amount for salaries. We've not necessarily identified what parameters those, those pay raises would be administered by, but we have plugged in an amount of $1,561,000 and change, which we think would um, largely address year two of that plan. And, um, and as I mentioned, we can, as we, as we get through this, we can break into more conversation about what that means and, and where that could get us, what that buys us. Um, the next item there is related to improvements to the development process, another council goal. Uh, we would uh, recommend that $46,941 worth of um, funds be invested in development services. This is not to expand function necessarily. This is to uh, meet the requirements that, that this, uh, this group of folks have been tasked with uh, meeting. And so this, is, this would be an increase to their budget, but this would help them maintain the level of service necessary that's already been uh, assigned to them. A large part of that, I believe $21,000 of that, is related to training for their boards and commissions, their various boards and commissions, that there uh, was a, a request to, to consider that and to get your, you know, your volunteers educated and get them the tools they need so that they can uh, do that that work and then a large part of the remainder is related to training training and continuing education for for staff um, in addition to some smaller items related to um, computer replacement and, and different things like that the next item there is related to health insurance we do anticipate that there will be an increase to the employer contribution and we um, this is again our most conservative estimate of what that would cost would be to the general fund. So we do anticipate that that would cost about four hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars to the general fund. Again, we we're still working through the parameters, the details of what those those premiums would look like for employees and um, and and the employer. Uh, Lisa Marley does have several options developed, and so as I as I stated, this is. Um, uh, an option that would that would fund that uh, from the general fund at the four hundred fifty seven thousand dollars this next item is pretty straightforward as we discussed uh, related to the pay as you go capital that if we do implement the plan to replenish this fund over a three-year cycle we would recommend investing that five hundred thousand dollars for council discretion to be used for capital this next item here is related to the uh, the vehicle maintenance. As we've discussed, improving management of the the city's fleet. That that expense would be three hundred forty thousand dollars. You know, simply the general fund component of that. And so, with all of those things plugged in at those levels, that would yield a revenue over expenditure of forty four thousand nine hundred eighty eight dollars. So, a largely balanced budget. And as I mentioned, we still have to. Sh the, we don't have all of these items wrapped up in a bow ready to hand you today. Uh, we we had each of the. Um, We've had m lots of discussion on each of these items, and as we received those property tax values on Sunday, we were able to kind of plug in numbers to be aware of really to what degree can we address these items. And so we do think that we can make uh, progress on each of these items at this level and then continue sharpening our pencil and bring you back you know, on our calendar. We have August 4th available for final budget discussion and record tax vote. Then that August 18th meeting will introduce the budget ordinance. So we did just want to get um, general consensus from the council have some discussion about you know what your what your appetite was for being able to address these items and to be able to um, to really answer any questions and make sure that we're in line with with what your priorities and goals are for implementing this year and so as we work through these we can um, we can plug and play and plug in different numbers and make sure that as we implement items that it still um, meets the budget so with that I'll just make sure that I've, I've covered everything with the city manager's um, uh, direction and made sure that we, we have everything noted and we're able to uh, really focus in on any of these items as the, as the council requests. What is the percent interest in the increase in the health insurance again? The increase for the employer contribution is, I believe, 12.6%. Okay, and everything that I read uh, last night said employer increase. Did y'all consider a portion of that being an employee assume some of that increase? Yes, that is for an employee increase as well. And with that, I may let Lisa Marley speak with um, the different options available for that.
Good, Good morning, morning, Council, <coughs> Mayor, City Manager. Um, we did create um, three different scenarios that we came up with. Uh, the one that is presented today in these numbers represents a 12.6% increase to the employer contribution <coughs> and to the um, single um, a single coverage employee only low plan would go from 1320 to 1650 per month um, and then all other tiers would be at four percent a four percent increase uh, the the Thir other scenarios that we can 1300 up a month I beg your pardon well Not 13 dollars Thir it okay. goes from 13 dollars and 20 cents per month to 1650 a month okay what uh, is, how does that affect the retirees? It's the same rates, same, same across the board. Employees and retirees all handled at the same rates. Um, the middle scenario that we came up with was a 10.6% increase to the city's contribution. The low plan employee only would go from $13.20 to $20. And then the all other plans would be a 10% increase. Wow. Uh, and then the worst case would be 8.5% for the city, worst case meaning for the employee. Um, the low plan would go from $13.20 to $25, and then all other tiers would be at 15%. So, you know, keep in mind that we have not raised our premiums for the employees in four years. And so uh, at this point, we really believe the increase was going to be so significant that there has to be a component that's attached to the employees and the retirees. Um, we felt like the 4% uh, increase was uh, the best for the employees, obviously. It's certainly the most for the city to take on, um, but we hope that uh, you know, we'll be able to work through those numbers with you. Lisa, are you talking about the employee only or employee plus family? Or what are you, what are the you talking about? Only only. The employee only is the one, is the 1320 to 1650 number. All other tiers would mm -hmm. go up 4%. Okay. So if you, if you look at that, um, <clears throat> someone who was in the very high plan, you know, the most expensive plan we have with family coverage, which is the largest component, um, it would go up 38, it would go up $38.31 per month. We, I think we have two people in the entire city between employees and retirees that are in that plan. Um, for the most part, um, it, I mean, that's the highest component that goes up. Thank you. Um, and I just might say that um, this year we have seen quite an increase in our large claimants. There's only been one claimant that's hit the stop loss, but we have had 13 other large claimants that uh, we haven't had that kind of an experience in years past, recent years past. Um, we uh, seem to be running pretty high on prescriptions as well. Um, there are, you know, each year the um, I guess it's the part of the federal government that does this, but they will, Medicare, they will take a look at all the prescription rates and what they are allowed to charge for those. And um, they will release new drugs to, um, oh, what is the word, uh, generic. Sure. And so um, they did not release any to generic last year. And, and we're seeing just a huge number of very high dollar prescriptions being taken advantage of and that's due in part to the, the all the advertisements that you see on TV for prescriptions they you know go into their doctor and say I saw this commercial and I really want this and so those prices are adding up and we are paying the price for that in our plan so any other questions about the insurance thank you Lisa thank you we're going to talk about these as we go what like what we think that Absolutely. Well, the, uh, yeah, the whole set, the way we have it set up is, of course, uh, as Borgia mentioned a while ago, we want, definitely want to make sure we address the uh, priorities City Council has set before us. But any one of these items that you have any questions about that you would like to go more into detail, we're prepared to do that. And we do have staff, of course, to address that as well. Well, if we talk about each one, I, I am f I'm in for favor of the plan that's been put forward mm -hmm. on the health insurance. Uh, that would be my okay vote that, on that and one. That, that's also the kind of feedback we need, if Correct. you're in favor or not. Right. I'm in favor of that one, the full amount. Okay. I have a question. 
We're going to have a question on vehicle maintenance. Well, let's let's. Or, shouldn't we all say whether we're in favor of it or not in favor yeah. of the one? I'm sorry, yeah. Johnny, but see a consensus. Health insurance, this affordable health care is going to break every one of us, but I don't see anything else we can do about this. And for comparison, I believe last year the general fund um, employer contribution went up and it cost about $520,000. Right. So this this is just, I hate to say, you know, what we have to take, but it's, it's in line with what we've seen in the past, with the experience we've had in the past. The only, the only thing I can say about this, I like the 500000 in the pay-as-you-go. I, I accept the insurance. I'd sure like, with a $3 million over expenditure, I'd sure like to have, I'd like to have a little money put back in savings. We don't know what the sales tax is going to do next year. The, the, the oil revenue is down. I'd certainly like to have a half a million dollars set back in savings somewhere instead of 44000 But I've been looking, and I can't. I don't see where you're going to find it. Well, and I'm, I'm sorry I don't have that before you today, but we do have, you know, sales tax, even though there have been some months where we're down a little bit, it's down, you know, 1.1%, 0.75%. By and large, we're over budget in sales tax because of our healthy experience early on. And, and management has been really terrific about holding the line on that and not capturing that for needs, that we've been able to address needs in other ways. So we have we do have our fund balance in a, in a, healthy, in a healthier place than we have been in some time, and we can develop some information on that to kind of speak to that because I do think that that is an important component to consider um, and, and, and we have made some progress on that. I just don't think we've done it. We have some, some room to communicate that to y'all. So We built a rainy day fund last year and then Lisa, it lasted a month, didn't it, Lisa? <laughs> <Yeah. at> it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Lasted about a month we had a rainy day. I really would like to see a rainy day fund in our city because we don't know what's going to happen next year and the indicators are that it I'd like to see. Some, I'd like to see a rainy day fund. Well, technically, it and pay as you go capital uh, that is that. would I be mean, available for that. And, and our fund insurance. balance is specific for the, yeah. the rainy day fund, and okay. so we'll we'll get a better report to you on that, sir. Everybody else happy with the insurance? No. Okay. I I really would like to see in dollars uh, the plan li that Lisa was talking about. You know, one, two, and three options. I I am concerned that the employees if we get down to the uh, raises and there's not enough money left to compute that we're going to be costing the employees or just wiping out their raise and I, I want to see those percentages if you're telling me that this this is the best option for the employees then I'll go along with that but I didn't hear that it is this budget would give the best option to employees it's the best case scenario for employees but it's not the best for the city I mean but it is right. it has no, to one way or the yeah. other um, if it's the best option for the employees I'll have your word on it because I don't see any anything in writing there and I didn't have it on the breakdown then I'll go along with it and, and we did want to address it to make sure that we it was uh, the least impact to the employees uh, as we looked at this and we had a good meeting about that and we had a, lot, a big old discussion about it and, and uh, we all agreed that uh, we knew that there had to be a portion that uh, con contributed by employees, but we also knew that uh, in doing so, they would want to keep it to a minimum, and this is what we're presenting at this point. And I do believe the actual adoption of the premiums and all of that will be a part of a bigger discussion. And so, for example, if we have – this would fund – and give council the opportunity to approve any of the plans, but there will be greater discussion about uh, that when the time comes. Actually, these are estimates, right, Lisa? And ultimate adoption of the plan, or are these firm? These are firm? Okay. Lucy, do you have thoughts? No, sir. I'm are just listening to you all. Are you for it? <coughs> sure. Okay. Mayor, I, I wanted to just add that I understand insurance, and I know it creeps up on us every year. So I'm okay with it, Roddy. I, I, I'm fine with it. The only question I had on, on was on uh, the page you go is, is that every year for the next how many years? We would increase it by $500,000 every year from for fiscal years 16, 17, and 18. Okay. And then fiscal year 19, it would freeze at that one and a half. There would no be, be no increase at fiscal year 19. We're yeah. trying to get $1.5 million back in that fund. Yes, Johnny. The answer is 500000 this year. Next year, she, she wants to propose a million dollars. So it's 500 each year, but she wants to grow it. So it's back up to the level where it was at 1.5 million each year. 
so that we can address some of the capital issues. I know you've brought up capital issues in the past. Uh, I know you've talked about the river in the past. We get that annual funding source up to a level where we can do some of those projects, uh, uh, then we'll, we'll be able to tackle some of those needs. So that's what she's trying to do is build that fund back up. Good. The other question I had, Morgan, was on vehicle maintenance. Uh, what does it mean when you say improved management of? Is that new, a new fleet, new improved management of what? I don't understand that. We have it's a lot of things. I'll, I'll defer to Shane well. to speak to that. Be brief, please, because I'm going to leave. <laughs> You're ready to go. Um, we're, we're looking for the improved management. We, we've implemented some new software. Uh, technologies that we're bringing in. We're also looking at bringing in some more, rearranging how we actually look at our fleet and our fleet management systems, um, monitoring and tracking wise. Uh, that way we can be more proactive. Uh, we'll know when something goes down in the field. We can bring it in, get it scheduled. Those type of things are what we're looking at. Okay. And also to better manage the uh, the number on the fleet as far as yes, certain yeah. redundancies that we have as far as certain equipment. That way we there. know, yeah, if we Use if we if we have pieces That's of correct. equipment that are not not being fully utilized to their potential, we can rearrange them and how they're being utilized. It's just a lot better way of tracking things. And two, it also allows uh, fleet management a, a small increase in what they've been doing. We haven't increased rates over in fleet management for five years, um, so they were. Actually, this year they were dipping into the red, into their, uh, into their in internal service fund. And we anticipate savings in the future when we start talking about reducing those redundancies yes, and making yes. sure that the equipment that we have is being fully utilized before we come to the council requesting to purchase uh, uh, more additional equipment or more right. equipment. Uh, That's correct. And I, I know along those lines, and I, this may not be the right, right time to mention it, but a, a number of uh, meetings ago. I, I was very much interested when it was brought to my attention uh, on an armored personnel carrier for PD. Uh -huh. I'm very much interested in that, and and I was told to wait till these talks started coming around. So, just to put a bug in your ear, I'm very much interested in looking into one of those for the safety of our officers, right. and and also just real quick on I didn't understand where the 115,000 for streets came. That's that's that sounds like just you know, crumbs adding to the whole, the big picture, but I didn't understand where the 115,000 came from. It basically looking at our budget, the budget that we actually utilize for actually putting materials on the street, which is, uh, thank, thanks to the council, uh, it's up to, you know, uh, just under 4 million. And so what they did was they took a, uh, percentage based on, um, consumer so municipal four, index municip the municipal the municipal yeah the municipal cost oh. index it's just an inflationary amount so we keep we don't get in the same hole that we were in inflation. now that now that now that i'm funded and, and we can actually we have a cycle in place we keep matching inflation year after year and that way we can keep our cycle in place it's not four million it's eight million four million per year isn't it it's four it's four million per year i mean what for the materials on the street, it's a, it's roughly about 3.89 is is what we're using to spend to put materials on the street. Uh, the um, now there's other other components of that okay. budget that uh, you know employees and things like right. that, but the actual materials on the street. Charlotte, I'm don't go away, Shane. I'm kind of stuck on the vehicle maintenance number. You want to add to your budget, $340,158. Want to add to increase your budget that amount? Yes, ma'am. I'm looking at the June report for the <coughs> vehicle maintenance fund. <coughs> in, in, in June, at the end of June, you had only spent 48% of your budget. I'll have to get Ryan up here to explain I'm not sure what numbers you're looking at um, oh the blue book you wanna, can you take it? yeah I believe so uh, miss farmer I believe the numbers that you're looking at reflect our fuel expense um, okay. that is that is a normal thing for us um, we budget a considerable amount for fuel because we just unfortunately have no idea what it's going to do. Um, so in a typical year, we may budget um, five or six dollars a gallon for fuel. 
um, with the anticipation that um, we, we may have a crunch and we may need it and, and it's a necessary component. Um, we've been extremely lucky this year and we've had extremely low fuel costs compared to what were budgeted. And so I believe without knowing exactly what you're looking at, I believe that's probably exactly where you're going. I, I'm looking at the overall and, fund, 301. And, and, that's a, and that is in and out. Um, we, if, we don't, if we don't sell the fuel, we don't make that money. It, it, so it's not just because it's a, there's a, a large number there. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to make we're going to generate those revenues. We actually have to sell the fuel at a certain cost to generate those revenues, uh, so we to make those expenditures. So the fuel the fuel kind of throws you off of what the actual operating costs are uh, for that department. So the first six months of, of of this budget that we're in, you're saying it's low for what we've already spent because we got a break on fuel cost and you have revenue you know remaining in your budget that you haven't spent but you anticipate spending it in July August and September that's all that's left we anticipate the yeah the money's really okay. I'm gonna say um, I'm going to say, I never say this, but for the internal service funds, such as vehicle maintenance, we almost um, don't look at the budget, ignore the budget for tracking and projecting purposes because their revenues must equal expenditures. So if their expenditures, if their revenues under budget, their expense has to be under budget as well. So we budget revenue high and budget expense high in case of a catastrophic year with fuel prices. But if that doesn't happen, then it's up to Ryan and Shane to manage that and make sure that expenses do not exceed revenue. So that when he says that he's in the red, it's because revenues are only 3 million, but expenses are almost 3.2 million. Mm -hmm. That's in that third column from the right. Mm -hmm. That's what he's referring to. And the fact that he's 48% through the budget, that's just a result of that we haven't had a catastrophic year for fuel yet and hopefully not so we're nine months through the year and you're right miss farmer that we're only 48 percent expended even though we're 75 percent through the year but revenues are less than expenditures and that's a concern for us we would want to be able to address that and make sure that expenditures and revenues are managed and at least balance if that adds to the conversation Okay. But we are talking about changes, though, Ryan. You might want to address this as well. We are talking about changes. Uh, um, I know that Shade talked about uh, software and what that software could do for us as well. This is not a system that we've had in place. This is something that we are proposing to put into place uh, to make sure that we can experience some of those efficiencies and in the future, of course, reduce our expenditures or capital costs as well. So if you want to address that, that'd be great. Yeah, just, just a tremendous um, opportunity for us to add to uh, this incredible asset we call our fleet. Um, with, with any type of data monitoring, vehicle equipment monitoring, um, that we can provide um, not only a transparency in exactly what's happening with our fleet, uh, but also the data to back up when, when we discuss um, ages or utilizations or, or efficiencies of these pieces of equipment. Um, that's the tremendous nature and, and that spreads throughout every single department that has either one or, or 200 pieces of equipment in their department. Um, it, it really is a tremendous tool and, and um, is, is very easily seen as it will pay us back in the near future as we've seen from other cities and other studies that have been done. Okay. Thank you. Sure. I'm not really sold on $340,000 for managing vehicle maintenance myself. I, I can't see the, I can't see it, but maybe the rest of you can. I, I can't. If I had a breakdown, maybe, but at this moment, I'm not comfortable with it. Going to have to save a whole lot of money to, to justify $340,000 going in. Increase. Right. And, and if I may just add a little bit to this, this, this is not just um, the one component uh, that we've talk, we're talking about now. Um, there, there are several components to this. Um, our fleet has been um, uh, in the Stone Ages for quite some time. Um, we're, we're looking and pushing at, at improving our facilities, improving our services to our customers, which are our departments uh, within the city. Um, we're trying to get equipment back to them faster when it does break. We're trying to prevent breakdowns, which again is, is some of these uh, management softwares that, and, and other tools that we have available to us. But as you know, um, vehicle expenses are increasing. Um, 
uh, the repairs to those vehicles are increasing. We can't just go out to our driveway and, and work on these things anymore, which means that, that my department needs the tools and equipment to do it. Um, uh, for example, uh, a heavy duty scan tool just to, to look at some of these machines, um, I'm looking at $12,000 uh, to, to simply be able to diagnose a dump truck correctly. Um, and those are, those are the challenges that we have in place. Um, we have not increased rates um, to our departments in, in years, um, but we've had salary increases and we've had other things that, that impact our operating budget. And so we're needing to catch up with that. We're needing to add some services that will not only improve uh, the, the ability that we have to serve our customers, um, but we are, <clears throat> uh, we are looking to, to really add to um, what we have to offer as, as a, a former fleet maintenance department, now known as Fleet Services, um, we really uh, wish to serve those customers well and to get those vehicles in and out. It costs us daily any time a vehicle is broken, sitting still, and we want to eliminate that. Um, any time we can be predictive and, and proactive instead of reactive when something fails, we're going to be saving time and money. That crew's not going to be sitting, that vehicle's not going to be sitting, and, and we can get back to work. So um, it is a big number, but there are are multiple things in line here for us to gear up to to correctly monitor and manage and we're presenting the number right now I know we have the next budget workshop will be next Tuesday uh, we wanted to present what uh, come forth as far as marginal revenues and some of the needs that we currently have and this can be broken down uh, bring it back and make sure that we specifically address uh, the points that you're talking about uh, so that the council can um, uh, review hopefully maybe if they're comfortable with it move forward with that number if not just ask more questions for clarification then so Absolutely. Thus far, all, all I've heard is software and management software, and to see where. Uh, I mean, are you buying? Are you hiring men or to work? Are you are you buying equipment? Are you buying? What what are you spending the three hundred and forty thousand dollars? So a big portion of this is on uh, data equipment monitoring, and those are actual devices to be placed on the vehicles that provide feedback, um, an instant feedback, and that, that does give um, our fleet services department data so that if, uh, for example, a check engine light comes on, we know it before the operator even tells us. Also, the, the department... Can't the operator will, tell you that, though, when he comes in that afternoon, that the check engine light's on? Could. Um, but with the information, we are able to get a jump on that. We're able to, uh, to know exactly what's happening. Um, when there's a fuel savings issue, we're, we're saving fuel by knowing it early. Um, the, there's multiple components to, to knowing that information sooner. So, And this, this is the future, and I, I agree with them on this, but I also could see, and I see Dwayne and Charlotte's points on this, when we come back on this and talk about it next Tuesday, Daniel yeah. said it appropriately, yeah. Break it down right. and maybe, you know, this is a budget and it's like all of us have a budget. Let's figure out what we can live with. Yeah. So when you come back next week, I think you need to say, well, I can cut out this, this, and this this year. You know, maybe we don't get all the vehicles this year. Or we put these tags or these, these information gatherers on the vehicles that we use the most, but not on all vehicles. You know, maybe put it on half of our fleet and save money. Sure. I'm just trying to think of how I'm trying to help you, but I'm also trying to help everybody that's involved in the city also we don't want to overspend if we don't have to so it might be better if you you come back to us next week and say you know i'll take 340 down to 200 or whatever and this year and then next year we'll come back and try to hit the other half of the of the fleet these these things that we're putting on there the only thing that i'm nervous about because they are new is the how long will they last will they last as long as the vehicles and things like that i, I would like to know that next week if you could find out that for me because I'd hate to spend this much money on these things and they don't last as long as the vehicle actually lasts. And then, you know, we, and we're getting them again and again. Then we, we're not saving money over the long run. And like you said, the guy can come in or the person can come in and say, my check engine light's on. Now they have radios and cell phones. I mean, they can call you when the engine light comes on and tell you just like your equipment can tell you. So I'd like a breakdown well, that, on it. That's, that's if they would. Mayor, <laughs> that's, that's not that's not necessarily just because something comes on and happens out in the field. They don't all automatically come in and take it straight to vehicle maintenance and and uh, fill out the paperwork and and it's not that efficient out in the field. 
as, as it were. I think $340,000 you could visit with them and have that part of their but, but that's, daily that's not all. that's not all this is, Mayor. No, it's, bring it's it not, back. It's not bring just it software back. and it's not just we'll, that. We'll, and yeah. it, but it I'd is like equipment. It, do, it does allow us the, the ability to, to, to track these vehicles through GPS to increase efficiencies yeah. that way. Uh, also, uh, too, again, we're talking about is this labor? Yes, this does as a component of labor. Last year when we gave all the – this is an internal service fund. So when you say we're going to give all the employees 5% raise that we did last year, well, the internal service fund, it had to eat $40,000 for those raises. Um, that money didn't come out of the general fund last year to go, go to him. He had to absorb that. Right. Well, he didn't really have it to absorb last year because he was running on such a – thin margin last year uh, we're coming into this year and we're looking at okay we're looking at budgeting raises uh, increased insurance costs all those things coming into next year well he's his revenue margin because he hasn't gone up on his rates we're well we're already dipping into the red so we're just going to keep pushing him into the red even further so these costs are, are to help that as well too so it's not just we're not just talking about tracking software and, and management from out in the field and, and getting our employees to behave differently. It, it's helping the entire service. But Shane, you need to make sure because they drive a vehicle that uh, they don't have the attitudes, well, it's not mine, I didn't pay for it, I'm not going to worry about it. Because yeah. in a sense, he did pay for it. It comes out of, you know, yeah. oh, yes, taxes. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, and they and need we, to treat we work. Those we work. Yes, like they are their we, own. we work with our employees on a very regular basis, and but um, it's just one of those things that those guys get in a hurry. You know, we we get a water break or we get something that happens, and we're out in the field, and those guys are pushing and going, and they're working hard, and just that little red light comes on the dash. It may not get seen, especially until the next day or, or two days later, depending on what's going on. And okay. so, but these are things that it, it just helps him manage the fleet better, quicker, faster, and allows quicker turnaround times. One of the things that eats us up, especially like this season right now when we had a lot of rain, uh, I have every mower, every tractor, every shredder out right now mowing. And when one of those goes down, the faster he can get that turned around and get it back to me, the faster I can go to work, fewer complaints we receive. There's no, I mean, even with everything going the way we were going this year, we have, we've had two or three shredders go down, we've had a couple of tractors go down, and that just puts us further and further behind and it kills us. And so the faster he can diagnose and fix, the better we are. Right. Bring us a breakdown. I'd also like to know how many of our vehicles already have a maintenance agreement on it, because I know we've been buying maintenance agreements with some of the vehicles we've bought in the past, and uh, that's already the covered under warranty or yeah, under manufacturing. Yes, yes, sir. Like to know that as well. Mayor, and I guess the key word here if I'm not mistaken, uh, are these are all estimates anyway, is that correct? These are all estimates, or are they set no, in stone? Or? Uh, much of it is an estimate because um, of how fluctuating the repairs and, and things okay. are in, in our world. But um, uh, yes, so hopefully uh, insurance will, uh, Lisa said it's pretty firm, so maybe we're there. Um, depending on what raises uh, council is willing to to uh, propose thank you for that by the way for considering um, but um, that will affect that sum as well so sounds sure. good is everybody happy with what we've looked at thus far is there any more yes. comments from council no good uh, mayor I, I would add that charlotte had a good question and we'll we'll um i think break that monthly down in a little different way where we isolate fuel revenue and expense so we can see how fuel contributes to the overall position and then how operations contribute to the overall position. And, I, you know, we look at that overall, but your question, Ms. Farmer, is a good one that, that will lead to an answer, which is partially what they're requesting a solution for. And so we'll bring that back at the same time. We can, we can talk about the operational impact uh, and, uh, um, and the step up in service that they're proposing. Okay, this, what we're talking about is the general fund proposed items, right? Yes, but this is the impact to the general fund of a change in service levels and billing rates for the um, uh, vehicle for vehicle maintenance. And uh, because it's because the general fund has uh, such a big piece of that business, this is the general fund impact to that. Well, I was just trying to clarify because I have another question on the general fund under stormwater, so I'll wait. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn? Yes, second. No. Okay. No.
<laughs> no. Morgan. I've been out in the sun too. Um, <laughs> uh, the, at the very beginning, you were talking about the property tax numbers and the percentage that we got this weekend. What was, and it was $2 million something dollars. Is, was that estimate a low estimate or was it right on? Certified valuations will yield two million five hundred eighty-three thousand dollars in marginal that's revenue. So, that's solid. That's a that's a, a that's certified by the appraisal okay, district. Okay, that's certified. That is true. Okay, I want so to. So I sure. added that to the four hundred eighty-one thousand dollars that we were already okay. aware of um, to to consider right. for today's discussion. So when they certified value, then when they certify values, they go through. You know, they notify property owners. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I got that. Yeah, and uh, so there are some items that have, have been through appeal and have been settled. There are right. some items that have not yet been through. And so when they certify values, um, they're giving us um, what we can bank on. Right, and that's all I care about. I wanted to make sure this this is a very solid number. The The next thing that I wanted to ask about was the salaries. It, it, that That is in line with the, the meet and confer that we did with the police department and – is that correct? I, I might defer to Lisa to, to, to speak the percentage, to. The percentages are in line? Uh, actually, the uh, the number on your screen represents um, a 5.5% increase to the general population of employees. Okay. Yeah. It's 5.5. And, and, yeah. Right. Um, five and a half percent for the general employees and um, for the fire department. The meet and confer came in at 6.26 percent. The 6.26 percent increase through meet and confer takes their salary ranges to 90 percent of the survey cities. This year? This year, coming up in October. What does it do to our employees this year? <sighs> well, if, if you go with the five and a half percent, we, we started off let me give you a little bit of history. We started off uh, September 30th of 14 at 87 percent. Um, on 10-1, we did 5 percent raises. And then uh, the survey cities did a 3.3 percent increase on an average. So we only made up about 1.5 percent on everyone last year. So that would put us anywhere from 88.5 to 89 percent. Um, this would? No, what we did last okay, year. Okay. So depending on what all other cities will do this year, it'll it, you know we won't know until that happens. Um, but this this increase in the budget represents a 5.5 percent increase. I can't tell you how far that'll take us against the other cities till we know what they do as well. Um, well, I think this is probably as high as we're gonna we're gonna talk about it this time. I don't right. think we can afford to do more. Right. I, I am in favor of doing the increase on this, so I just as we're going along trying to get this meeting moving along, I'm in favor of doing that. I'm also in favor of doing the streets. One discussion on the salaries that we probably would need to have, and not necessarily at this meeting, but to g throw it out there for you all to be thinking about, um, you know, the last two years we've done pay increases just across the board. Um, you had to get a satisfactory evaluation to qualify for, but there was no distinction between those employees who got exceeds and those employees who got meets. We have broken it out in the years past, so I guess at some point we'll need direction from you on how you want us to administer the raises this year. And that was my next point. I don't like these across-the-board 5% raises because the ones at the top get a huge raise and the ones at the bottom get nothing or yeah. very little. I, I, don't like, I don't like percentage raises. I would like evaluation raises. And I think we need to focus more in the middle and on the bottom than we do on the top. That's just my personal opinion. So I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem with the figure, but I would like those figures to be worked where they're needed the most and not spend all the money on the – you know, top 10 percent of our employees. Right. And that's um, where most of it will go. Well, and I'll, I'll tell you, Mayor, when we start looking at our survey, um, it's our higher ranges now that aren't doing as well as the lower ranges. We, we have for, you know, the last three or four years, we've really focused on the lower ranges, and they've, they've come out very, very well in comparison to other cities. But now we're finding it's our higher level ones that aren't because of that. 
Um, but, you know, I, I know it's demoralizing to employees that get exceeds on their evaluations and they get the same as somebody that just barely gets by. We hear that every year when we don't, you know, separate them. So w we will need, you know, you all to give us your feelings on that and how you'd like for us to administer I'm them. definitely in favor of that. that. That's not fair in any way. And what, what gives you the incentive to, to do better? Absolutely. You know you're going to get the same raise as the person that does the best in your department. It's true. And, you we know, our ranges have just been in such a mess that we needed to do it across the board to fix everything. Um, but, but we are getting better with that. Yeah. And so um, I think this would be the year to separate them based on your evaluation. I How do you feel about it, Johnny? And agree. then we'll go to Charlotte. Yeah. I'm kind of in line with you, but I do see that the the, the moral factor, the, the morale factor does mm -hmm. play a big part, but leaving out the comparison with the other cities, in your estimate, I mean, in your just guesstimate, where, where would we, this would bring us up to it, in well, 89, if 90 percent, where, where? If, if the other cities in the survey give, like what they did last year, say 3.3 percent on an average. This is going to put us very close to the 90 percentile mm -hmm. if we if we go with a five and a half percent uh, to the ranges. If um, I mean, I feel very comfortable that we would be somewhere very close to 90 percent. That would that would have been my guess too. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, and on this, I'm let's sorry. Get, let's get Charlotte, then we'll work around. I agree with the mayor. Evaluation raises are, are to me are the only way to go. Um, if we could see the employee reviews the percentage of those that exceed those that just meet the percentage and those that are below uh, I do have yes that. I want all employees I, you know our average to be 90 percent or better but I also need to know which employees out there the percentage who meet or exceed or right just barely getting by all right I do have that information um, and, and keep in mind, too, these were years that employees knew their performance didn't dictate a different pay raise, okay? So in the 2012-13 year, so this would have been the evaluations done in September of 2013, 44% uh, of our employees exceeded and 55% of our employees met. We had one employee citywide who got below expectations and that was with no money connected to it so I felt like those those numbers were very reflective of what the actual um, then we looked at last September we had 31 percent exceed and 60 68 percent meets we had three employees who came in below expectations um, two of those are no longer with us and one of them has improved their performance and wound up getting meets after the probationary period so we're sitting at the one-third of our employees exceed and two-thirds meets is where we're sitting right now. That's what I needed to know. Okay. Thank you. You're Lucy, welcome. you yes. comfortable with this? Yes, sir. Rodney? Okay. On, when we talk about our employees, how short-staffed are we right now citywide? How many positions are open? Uh, when I last looked, we had 20-something um, positions open, which, believe me, is better than we've been in the last couple of years. Um, we haven't seen the necessary shortage that we were, you know, crying about a year ago. Okay. There's more and more applicants out there. Okay. So, um, so the pay, could, and that's because the oil field stuff's gone down sure. and all those employees are coming back to the sure. city to work Absolutely. for the city. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I need to know. Thank you. Absolutely. John? No, I just want to go back, and I want to. I want this to be crystal clear, like on the other. And my, and it's a passion of mine that I'm going to push. I know a number of years ago when Brian Dunn brought us the idea of this, uh, the latter one, that truck, it was 907000 And I was so, I mean, I was all for it. These guys need to have equipment such as that. But I'm going to go back to PD, and I'm going to, really stress i am very adamant about looking into an armored personnel carrier for these guys i don't want that to go just okay he talked about it mentioned it that i am dead serious about this if somehow we can make it work squeeze it in if we can come up with nine hundred thousand dollars at the year in uh, that one year that we got him his ladder truck i think we can come up with some money to at least help out this this department that I see it in the news every, every time something happens, like something to just, it's going, to, I guess, I hope it doesn't have to take something drastic 
to happen here in the city for us to even get serious about this idea. So I want to push it, Michael. You know, that's a, uh, that's, that a, that's a good point, and that's one of the reasons that kind of thing is exactly why Morgan's trying to rebuild that capital money. So that would be a good example yes. of something which could be funded by that other pay-as-you-go capital line. Yes. I mean, there's there are lots of things that are going to compete for those dollars, but you bring up one item in particular that would compete Morgan, well. I'm, I'm serious. I'm adamant about it. I'm going to keep on harping on it. So think about me. Think about the, the, the officers out there that could very well use something like that. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention that we've talked about in years past and it didn't come up today was how many people are eligible to retire. And, you know, a lot of times we talk about that and you were asking about vacancies. Um, we do have 320 employees that are eligible to retire within five years. Wow. Yeah. So wow. it's, it's, uh, what was that number again? Calamon. 350. <laughs> I'm sorry, 320. Is that uh, a third of our mm -hmm. pretty employees? Close. Yes. A third yes. of our employees can retire in five years. Within five years, yes. We have 172 that can retire today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Mr. Silvis, to speak to the, uh, the ladder truck, for example, was funded through debt. The armored personnel carrier, I believe, is in the CIP for $400,000. So as Mr. Dane sp sp stated, could be... Uh, identified through, th through the pay-as-you-go capital process. What's that number again? About $400,000, I believe, for 400, the armored personnel carrier. Motion to approve. <laughs> and I want 10% of our budget put in a savings account, <laughs> and I want that before he gets his armored personnel. Mm -hmm. the, what, and, where, do we, where do we need to go now, Morgan? And I'm sorry, I, had, I just made a couple notes while we were talking uh, to, to make to make sure and, and clarify on the pay as you go capital as we mentioned that'll get us back up to that one and a half million dollars increase to the budget um, but it, it, it in no way funds everything and Morgan, so we Morgan, you just said that this would get us back to no it doesn't get it'll us. get us back to replenish what we funded in the past okay, but, but it does not identify it does not identify and capture all of our capital needs that we've identified in the city okay. it will not answer all of our problems this 500,000 will bring that number up to what Five hundred seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, but the other two fifty is dedicated, right? Right. So, I heard you say this will bring us back to one point five million. No. This action, this, this uh, approving this program. It's but it's going to take three years of commitment to yeah, get us there. That's the key. Okay. This five hundred thousand gets us five hundred thousand. Yeah. This two fifty is already. This program. But next County year we'll be voting on this again, whether we want to do that's 500 if there's capacity. next year that's exactly or not, right. or a million. Like you said, you were, didn't you say earlier that maybe we were trying to shoot for a million next year to get it back quicker? I thought I heard Morgan say that. Mike, Mike, Michael did say something about a million. Um, next year, yeah. another 500 would give us a total of a million. That's what it was. Okay. I thought you were saying. And Morgan's trying to build it over three years. She's trying to take that incremental approach right. to build that back to where it, where it was. So I think that I'm hearing that in in theory the salaries we do identify with funding s this level of salaries and we'll we'll set the parameters of exactly how that'll be administered in future discussions but we are okay with plugging that in for consideration. Yes. 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 I'm happy with it. Is yes. Everybody. Sure. And okay. on the streets I'm of not ready to vote with it until I see the breakdown. We're not voting okay. today. No. I we're just we're just consensus. Oh. To give us direction to go back and work on it and, and bring you a proposal. You're going to bring this again next Tuesday? Is that what you said? Tuesday yeah, will right. be our final discussion about the budget. Council meeting. And then for the streets, as we mentioned, that's a 3% increase on the $3.89 million for, oper for, for supplies. I'm comfortable with that. Is it, what's consensus? Council? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. And then for the development services, is there any additional that we can provide or any discussion on that specifically to, uh, to consider uh, this is... This is what staff has identified as necessary to meet their, their minimum requirements. Remind me again what that is. About $21,000 of it is related to training for boards and commissions. A large portion of the remainder is related to training and continuing education and certification Remember. for staff. Okay. And then um, supplies and operating dollars necessary. I'm good. They've been really have, lean for. I don't have a problem with that. What's we consensus? need the education, yes. So that gets us close. That gives us some room to, to con continue to consider these items and get them. And we'll come back with a ma vehicle maintenance as far as a breakdown on that uh, at the next city council meeting. And as far as that pay to go, 
you know, that may be – maybe we'd want to make a four-year plan out of a three-year plan and work on the savings account and also work on the normal personnel. If we could get something maybe in the three – I mean, just an idea. That's an but excellent it, point, Mayor, because it's easy to, to plug yeah. that in to make yeah. that balance the budget, and then we always know we have that need for, for pay-as-you-go. That is an opportunity. Bring something back. And I, I even think that on the on the armored personal carrier, that four hundred thousand you mentioned. <laughs> if we <laughs> went, if we went three, it's more like it's more like two sixty three hundred. No, it's not. It, if we went three hundred thousand on pay as you go and put a hundred in savings and put a hundred toward the vehicle in four years, we could have all of them where we wanted it. So I don't know. Just just a, I'm just throwing that out there. I think they but call that muddying the water. Yeah, I think it is muddy in the water because the pay-as-you-go capital really is a savings account for spe special yeah. projects that come up. And you, you create another savings account, I mean, what are you going to use the savings for? We're not using it for retirement. We need to use it to run the city. Um, You're using it as a contingency. That is a contingency. Pay-as-you-go. It's another it's contingency. But, okay. A sub account contingency. A sub contingency. <laughs> well, you're, I like your sub ones because they get used immediately and yeah. you don't have them. Yeah, at so. least they'll take care of them. Your subs at last okay. for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> Vehicle maintenance, I think you're bringing us something back so that we can yes, see sir. what that's all yes, about sir. so cool. we can understand that. All right. So, really, I guess, is everyone, is a consensus that we're relatively happy Moving with? Right. Mary, you might have want to ask Lucy what she thinks. I asked Lucy. Yeah. Hey. Everything I'm thinking, y'all are saying. So what's the sense of okay. saying it? <laughs> She's that Lucy good. said she was happy. She's that good. Okay. <laughs> She's that smart. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, with that, we'll, we'll as as discussed, we'll bring back next week uh, related to continued budget discussion. Finalize <coughs> these items, and then we're getting into our state deadlines. And I, I know I talk about them a lot, but we just want to make sure and, and be really clear that we're being transparent and meeting these deadlines. We'll have the record vote on the property tax rate, and then on August 18th, we're going to introduce the budget ordinance and have the first late hearing on the tax levy. And so we're we're getting into the home stretch here. What else we got, boss? That's it. Yep. Tell me right quick why we take money out of the general fund. Is that because we run short of what we budgeted in other funds? So general funds got to make up the shortage? You, uh, you'll have to give me an example of specifically what you're talking about. Well, I, I'm looking at uh, the fund 203 and the general fund transfer. We transferred into that fund out of general funds, and, I, and I'm trying to figure out why. What page are you on? I'm on page 34. For the Texas Bank Sports Complex, there is a, a tax. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. There go is. Ahead, you know the there is a. Um, there is a t tax component to support those operations. They do not fund themselves through program income, so it's largely supported by tax income. And the tax income goes into the general fund. Correct, and then we support that Texas Bank Sports question. Complex and several Thank other you. operations. Because I was getting a little upset if we were supplementing. And we're not supplementing. It's monies that go into the general fund first, so they got to go to their designated places. That's all I needed to know. Brian. Technically, we still do have a motion and a second on the floor to adjourn. Just to yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remembered that. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of discussion after that, though. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and I think it's time. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 This is over. Thank you.